What's up? It's your boy Austin Rutherford back here again today. I bought my first house when I was 19 years old and everybody always asked me, how in the world did you buy a house at 19 years old? I was able to do this through making money as a teenager. I had the money saved through my teenage years to be able to put a down payment on a house when I was 19 years old. So I'm going to give you seven ways that you can make $10,000 as a teenager, in five of those ways, I've personally made money doing. There's always a hustle at the end of the day. You can flip couches, you can flip shoes, you can flip cars, you can flip candy. There's always a way to make money. It's just up to you if that's something you actually want to do or not. And if you're an adult watching this, make sure you have your kids watch this video and you stick around till the end so I can show you a secret. It's something that massively helped me that my parents did for me when I was young, which I hated at the moment, but it was a huge blessing for me in the future. So stick around. So first thing for me, it was cutting grass. It was mowing lawns. To make $10,000 mowing lawns you need to cut 400 lawns at $25 a pop $25 a lawn means that you have to have 20 lawns for 20 weeks so you got to cut 20 grasses every single week for 20 weeks to make $10,000 that's not that difficult to do but keep in mind if you're cutting that much grass there's probably going to be some times where your friends are out kicking it or they're out on the weekend having a good time or going out and playing basketball or going out and partying where well, you're going to have to be working you know that's part of the sacrifice you're going to have to make you're not going to have to sacrifice your entire life maybe a few hours on the weekend it's not going to kill you, but it'll set yourself up for the future. For myself, when I was younger, I didn't have 20, 50, 100 lawns to do. I cut five to six lawns every week when I was younger. But that, on top of the other things I'm going to share with you, adds up into a lot of money, especially as a teenager. And I know if you're sitting there thinking, well, I'm in Arizona, or I'm in Phoenix, or I'm in Cali, and I don't have grass to cut, I'm going to get to a lot more ways for you to make money outside of simply cutting grass. Another way of making money is flipping candy. I know this sounds corny, but when I was younger, back in middle school and in high school, I would go to Sam's Club, I would buy candy in bulk, I'd buy a bunch of candy. Candy, and then I'd go to school and I'd sell the candy and the gum out of my backpack. So in class, in the hallways, I was always selling candy and gum. So I actually carried around two backpacks with me, one for school and then one with full of, of money <laughs> and candy and gum. So I actually ended up getting sent to the principal's office for doing this. So I walked in, I was really tight with my principal at the time. And he's like, are you selling drugs, Austin? <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not. Opened up my book bag. I was like, I'm selling candy. He's like, well, you need to stop doing that because it looks like you're slinging dope out of your backpack. So unfortunately, that was my end of the candy era. But like I said, I did it for probably four or five years when I was younger. Another way that I made a bunch of money was selling Buckeye necklaces. So this is more of a niche in our market. You know, Buckeye necklaces is our, uh, the Ohio State Buckeyes, the football team. So we, I would go out and find Buckeye necklaces, Buckeyes, put them on necklaces, and then go out and sell them. So again, this is the niche to Ohio, but every place has a niche. You can sell memorabilia. You can sell Buckeyes. And every place has a niche that you can tap onto. So like I said, I, I would literally ride down to the neighborhood park where there's a bunch of buckeye trees with backpacks full of buckeyes i'd put them all in my backpack i'd ride home i'd wash all the buckeyes to get the dirt off and then i'd sit there and drill every buckeye everyone it took me forever to do this and then i would put them all on a necklace i'd make a buckeye necklace and then i'd go down to the Ohio state football and basketball games and sell buckeye necklaces to people on the streets for five dollars crazy thing is i had a whole assembly line put together when i was younger i would pay my friends one dollar per necklace that they made so they would go down and help me find the buckeyes they would help me drill the buckeyes and they would put the necklaces together with me and i gave them one dollar per necklace and then i'd go out and sell those necklaces for five dollars a piece at the football games so you gotta think about this if there's a 12 13 14 15 year old kid running around with 100 Buckeye necklaces, trying to sell them to people out there tailgating. I don't know about you, but if I see a kid hustling like that, I'm buying 20, 50, 100 necklaces because I respect the hustle. Versus them seeing a grown adult go around trying to sell Buckeye necklaces, they're gonna be like, eh, you know, you should probably go get a job or something. But for me as a kid, people love to see those things. So I was selling Buckeye necklaces left and right. People were buying Buckeye necklaces, paying me, and then throwing them in the trash can. I got my money, so that's all that I cared about. Another area is shoveling driveways. I know there's some areas that don't get snow. <laughs> Lucky or unlucky for me, we were one of the areas that did get snow. Every single time it would snow or I would see that snow was coming, I would get up super early and go out there and start shoveling driveways. Because you got to think, if it's a work day, adults are leaving the house to go to work. So one, you're going to miss them. They're not going to be there to say, yes, shovel my driveway, I'll pay you. And when they leave, they put a bunch of tire marks in the, in the snow, which makes it more difficult to shovel. And all the kids, all the other neighborhood kids aren't getting up. It's a snow day. We don't have school. They're not getting up till 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock. For me, I was up and at it. I was trying to get this money. Another way you can do this to make money is flipping cars or flipping sneakers. So I never personally did this, but a buddy of mine, I was talking to him the other week, actually, and he said the way that he got into real estate investing is he flipped sneakers. And he flipped so many sneakers he made $70,000 to start investing in real estate. Think about that, 70 grand flipping sneakers. 
I didn't even know that was possible until he told me that last week. But again, that goes back to learning a niche. There's always a niche that you can tack onto. Flipping sneakers was his niche. He became a genius in what sneakers are worth. Maybe it's video games. Maybe it's memorabilia. Maybe it's t-shirts. Maybe it's hats. Maybe it's cars. Whatever it is, become a professional in that area and flip things to make a ton of money. This kid drove from Columbus, Ohio to Dallas, Texas. Two days of shoe shows. He bought 100 sneakers, drove all the way back and made five to seven grand just off of those sneakers alone. That's dedication. That's being a master at your craft and loving what you do for an end goal. He told me, he said, my goal was to flip sneakers, make a ton of money so I can start investing in real estate. So for all you guys in like the, the desert, in Phoenix, Arizona, California, things like that, pool gals, pool guys and pool gals. That's another way to make money. Every, everybody out there has freaking pools. In Ohio, nobody has pools. Everybody in those states, Florida, all have pools. So they need somebody to take care of the pools. I've never done this, but I'm sure you can get 20, 50, 80 pools where you go to on a weekly basis and, and test the water and add chemicals and, and sweep up the leaves, whatever it is, you can do that and you can make money with it. And I touched on this earlier, but selling memorabilia at sporting events, find a way to buy things in bulk, hats, t-shirts, shoes, cups, whatever it is, buy things in bulk that have that logo on it for that sport or that team, and then walk around the games at the tailgates and go out there and try and sell things. You know, buy it in bulk so you get a discount and then sell it at retail so you can make money on it. Last but not least, the tech world. We live in a world that's all online. E-commerce, drop shipping, tech, everybody is online and you can make a ton of money from sitting at your laptop doing, pushing a couple keystrokes. You can make a ton of money. I got an 18 and 19 year old friend that just bought a McLaren off of Amazon drop shipping. So there's a ton of money in the tech space and you can literally learn that from sitting at your home on a laptop. As you can see, there's a ton of ways of making money and being creative and putting money into your pocket as a teenager. But I can already hear people saying it. Well, I don't have time. Well, I'm young. Well, I was at this party. Well, I play sports. Well, I run track. All these excuses have always been there. I was a full-time basketball player. I played basketball all day, every day. I played in school. I practiced at night. I did all those things. But on top of all of that, I still made time to go out there and make money to do these things, to put money in my pocket. If I never did those things, I never would have been able to buy a house at 19. Think about how much farther ahead of the curve I am. People buying houses at 30 and 40, I bought one at 19. I just shaved 10 to 20 years off of my life to be able to enjoy 10 to 20 more years of my life with more money. So the sacrifices you make when you're young to put money in your pocket can pay off tremendously in the future. I never would have been able to buy a house without doing that when I was young.